Towards the end of World War I in 1917, the German military nationalised all the big film companies in an attempt to produce pro-government films which would help them win the war. They were all brought under the umbrella of UFA. Their aim was to compete with the popular spectacles made by Italy to entertain and distract audiences from the devastated economy. A filmmaker named Ernst Lubisch became known as the master of costume film, known for his first big international hit, Madame de Barry, also known as Passion, which was made in 1919. Lubisch emigrated to Hollywood in order to escape the rise of the Nazis. Despite the nationalisation of many film industries, some small studios managed to remain independent, such as Decla. The producers at Decla knew they had to do something different to get people's attention. And so, in 1920, writers Hans Janowitz and Karl Mayer told the story of an insane hypnotist who used sleepwalking to commit murders through the silent horror film The Cabinet of Dr Caligari, directed by Robert Wien. They used mise-en-scene or expressionism on their set, meaning they deliberately distorted the setting to throw the audience off balance. The script was inspired by the experiences of both writers in the military during World War I, who were left feeling distrustful of authority. This can be seen through Caligari, who represents the German war government, and Cesare, who symbolises the common man conditioned, like soldiers, to kill. Modern film critics have praised it as a revolutionary film and considered it as the quintessential work of a German expressionist cinema. Another German filmmaker from the Weimar period is Fritz Lang, who was heavily influenced by mise-en-scene. Lang's masterpiece is the sci-fi silent film Metropolis, which combined German expressionism with his interest in special effects at a cost of more than 5 million Reichsmarks. The film is based around a love story set in a futuristic society where the wealthy live in luxury high above the toiling masses. To begin with, it was a huge financial failure and it took decades before it was held as a dark and sinister classic. Another major director of the Weimar period was Murnau. He created hits such as the 1922 gothic horror Nosferatu and the 1924 film The Last Laugh, featuring the famous German actor Emil Jannings, who also starred in the 1930 classic The Blue Angel. Alongside Jannings was the legendary Marlene Dietrich, who through this film showcased her talent singing many songs, including her signature performance of Falling in Love Again. I just can't help it. Dietrich's acting was audacious and daring during this Weimar period. The Doors Plan of 1924 provided extra aid to try and help Germany pay for the extensive damage it caused during the war, but it created problems for the film industry. As well as this, it strangled exports, meaning German films had a harder time finding distribution outside of the country. Also, it became harder to get loans, and so many small film production companies fell bankrupt. American film industries then found the opportunity to overtake Germany and flooded them with Hollywood films. Their days as leaders were now over. That being said, German cinema of the Weimar period had a profound and long-lasting influence on the film industry to this very day.